anyway, so if you know the, if you know that you can convert liter atmospheres to joules, all of a sudden you can go from pressure or from atmosphere times liters to work and um, or convert like the this into now calculating for work. Okay. I don't know. Does that help? Yeah. Sorry, that. No, no, it helps yeah. me remember what was yeah. going on. What's so, sorry, you said you wanted to look at. And so, like this one, it says calculate the work in joules for the process of filling a 55 liter flexible container when the external pressure is 86 atmosphere. And so, if we were using, you could just plug. Because what I'm wondering is, it, this is the change in mm -hmm. volume, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if you're filling a 55 liter container, how would you know what the change in the volume is? Or would you just plug in the 55? Well, we just skipped over this part and went into these. Okay. So maybe I could just go back and ask him that tomorrow yeah. morning. I'm sorry. No. I'm like uh, so tired all of a sudden. Oh. Makes sense. Okay. And I we did go over this one, so I do know the answer. Okay. I just wanted to figure out how to get it. Okay. Because we tried to do it with like a little group of us. Mm hmm But we were just, there was a couple of state steps that we forgot. Calculate the work, okay. <clears throat> okay, so we want work. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the first thing we're going to write? Well, the formula. Yeah. P equals. Okay, and we want work. So we want work is going to equal the negative, the negative delta and RT. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it tells us what's our chemical um, equation? Um, it's C10H8 plus uh, 12O2. Um, reacts to 10 CO2 and 4 H2O. Okay. So our equation's balanced, right? Mm -hmm. It's always worth double checking. So we got it really fast. We've got eight. So there's 24 oxygens, 34. We've got 20. Should I put the right coefficients? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that works. Twenty-four. Eight. Oh, I was I was counting carbon as oxygen. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, there's ten more on this side. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So we're balanced, right? Okay. Yeah. And we know that the temperature is two ninety-eight. Okay. So this is what we want. This is what we're given. Sometimes it's nice to just kind of like make a little chart for yourself. So, you know, temperature equals what? Uh, 298 degrees Kelvin. And I gave it to you in Celsius, but you just added 273, right? Yeah. And you don't put degrees signed by Kelvin. Okay. Just FYI, you don't have to. 
Um, okay. And that's it. That's all we're given? Yeah. Okay. So we want work. We have an equation for it. Or we could just remember that work equals negative pressure times change in volume, right? Yeah. And then end up with this equation. That one, yeah. Okay. So and we know the constant R. We know R, yeah. So what is it? Um, point zero eight two one. And what's the, what are the units? Um, that is liters um, per times atmosphere over moles Kelvin. Okay. So you're right. We know T, we know R. We know N, don't we? Yeah, we can calculate with the gases. Because we know that um, naphthalene is a solid. And H2O mm -hmm. is water. And so you can just do 12 minus 10. 10. For what, sorry? To figure out your moles. Or do you go 10, or you'd go 10 minus 12. Because you have 10 CO2 as your final. That's your gas. Minus the 12O2. I think it just do two. So I think what you can do is say you have 10 moles of CO2, 4 moles of water. So, 14. so you have 14 total moles on this side. On this side you've got 1 mole of naphthalene, 12 moles of oxygen, so you've got 13 moles on each side. Because we're supposed to end up with a negative 2. Well, a negative 2 for n or just for the answer? For n. For n. 